Hey everyone, Perry and Roca here with a brand new movie review for you and this is for the latest in the Harry Potter film franchise and the Fantastic Beasts series. It's The Crimes of Grindelwald. I am not even going to try to tell you what this movie is about, so Roka, can you give a very brief synopsis yes. of what happens in this? Gela Grindelwald wants to uh, get the wizards and witches together to get the purebloods to rule uh, the non-mag, the non-spell, non the ones who can't do spells, the non-magic people, so that they can be the alpha dogs, essentially, of the world. And that's basically the whole plot. Scamander's recruited by Dumbledore to try to stop this from happening. There's your a synopsis. Yeah, I, I got that much, but yeah. if I'm being honest here, I don't think I understood the large majority of what was <laughs> happening, who was doing what. There were even points in this movie where I wasn't sure if we were in the wizarding world mm. or the real world because the plot jumps around all over the place. And I think kind of to set the stage here a little, I mm. want to let you guys know when Fantastic Beasts came out, I wouldn't say I loved that movie as much as most mm -hmm. of the Harry mm -hmm. Potter movies, but it still had a lot of charm and fun to it that I enjoyed and I wanted to see more of and certain characters really caught my eye and I wanted to see more from them mm -hmm. in particular. Here, it's like that group is completely torn apart. There are so many people and once you get the chance to sit in someone's shoes for a little while and really get into whatever they're going through, you're immediately ripped out and taken to a completely different location, yeah. dealing with a completely different matter. There were so many words that I didn't understand, and I was saying uh, this to you before, yeah. I felt frustrated because I wanted to get into it and I wanted to understand, but I felt like because I didn't know every teeny tiny detail about this universe that I was kind of being left out. Well, as a person who knows a lot of details in this universe, you know, having worked at uh, Universal Studios in the Harry Potter land, having been familiar with this uh, whole series that they did, I was even more upset, even more frustrated watching the movie. Too many characters, too much of convoluted storyline. An hour and a half in, I was just completely bored, wanted to leave the theater, and there was still 45 minutes more to go in the movie. It's incredibly frustrating what Perry mentions. I, I was a fan of the first movie because of the relationship with Queenie and then having that as it progressed. But there was none of the charm that the first movie had that got you to come back for this sequel. And that was really surprising. It's a very dark film, and there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is everyone is so affected, and everything is so important, and then there's also self-important in their dialogue that it becomes annoying. It, beco it, it drags down the action and the pace of the film to where you just feel like you're watching a bunch of terrible soap opera scenes strung together. And plot points, they jump all around the film, give you no background of what's happening, and just expect you to go along with it. It should cater to people like Perry who haven't read the books necessarily or don't know enough about the history that they should be able to walk in and enjoy this movie. The fact that both of us who, who have extensive knowledge on my end and not so much knowledge on her and about the franchise didn't enjoy the movie, that should tell you something. There's ways to do it though yeah. where you can cater to both uh, types of viewer and mm -hmm. you know you can use exposition in a way where it's not necessarily an exposition dump but it feels like a more organic way to maybe remind people of what happened in the first movie. Right. And to, to set things up that way and I feel like they f they failed pretty miserably in both areas whether it was just basically not catching you up on anything that happened in the previous film and then there were other things where they would have to give background on a specific character and yeah. something that happened in that character's path past and however that was conveyed w w was not very dynamic or engaging mm -hmm. and I kind of found myself tuning out a little bit, but just to continue something you just said, yeah. my favorite thing about that first movie was the Queenie and Jacob relationship, yeah. and I don't know what happened to it here, but it, it has a pretty significant arc. It mm -hmm. starts somewhere and mm -hmm. it ends somewhere completely different, but it was so jagged and made no sense to me mm -hmm. with why certain people were feeling certain ways that it left me completely uninterested in seeing my favorite two characters from the first film develop any further after this. I think overall that's what you can say. I feel like the movie betrayed some of the characters that we fell in love with in the first movie and that is a shame and some of the decisions they made about the intelligence and the knowledge of these characters was really frustrating for me to watch as an avid movie lover and a lover of these characters that I was interested in, including Catherine Waterston's character. Like that was really tough to see what they did with her character. And Scamander, I liked Eddie Redmayne, but I think Eddie in the wrong hands sometimes, that character becomes too 
too much of this and not enough of actually real life living and that was frustrating to watch as well and what the some of the, just some of the decisions they made with the characters overall was incredibly frustrating when I walked out of the theater. I think the only thing that I still loved in this movie just as much as mm. the first one was the Niffler. Yeah. <laughs> because oh. most of the beasts they they did look there pretty were some great good. New beasts. Yeah. But I, I don't think any Creatures. of the action sequences ever really did it for me no. because they don't have the foundation of an explanation that would make me appreciate, you know, not even necessarily the creature per se, but even the location that they mm -hmm. were in. There were a couple times in this movie where they jumped from location to location, and it seemed like that particular spot had meaning to whatever character we were focusing on, but also in the wizarding world yeah. overall, and I, I didn't know what it was. Like, there were yeah. maybe, maybe rooms in the Ministry of Magic that I wasn't entirely understanding, but... I miss that. I miss the world building. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the charm of the Harry Potter film franchise to me is is moving along with Harry and his friends and learning about what they're capable of in all these different places that are around them. And, you know, it's not that you need to rehash all of that. And I know we're not talking about students here, but there are ways to explore and learn with these characters. And I feel that that was just non-existent here. I agree. Uh, Steve Cloves may end up becoming the uh, hero of the Harry Potter franchise because he's a screenwriter of the Harry Potter films. J.K. Rowling took over the duties for these last two, and I have to say, they're both a bit messy in, in, in plot points and in flow through the whole movie, so uh, it's an unfortunate ending for me of this movie. All right, I'm giving this job to you first. What's yeah. your score for Fantastic Beasts 2, Roka? It's a five, a five, and I only give it a five because of the inventiveness of the creatures that are in Scamander's case, but other than that, I think it's a complete betrayal of what they had set up in that first film. I'm actually gonna go lower. I'm giving this movie a, a three out of 10. I, I was, oh, 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 <laughs> I'm Whoa. getting a reaction behind the camera. Oh, oh, I was really looking forward to this. I yeah, me just too. love living and existing in this world, even when the movie itself isn't necessarily the best movie out there. I just like exploring and learning more and, this movie did nothing for me. I mean, I thought about it all last night. And when I say mm -hmm. I thought about it all last night, the only thing I thought about was, wow, I took nothing from that movie. Absolutely nothing. And even now it's coming to mind, the score. The score is so intrusive. And mm. oftentimes the score feels like it's there to spell out how you're supposed to feel. And I guess that helped color certain scenes in ways that I wasn't even understanding. So, <laughs> But it's just so heavy handed. This didn't work for me at all. I took nothing from it. And yeah. I don't really want to see more of these movies now. And I think so, that's yeah. my biggest fear as well. <laughs> There's more to come. All right. That's it. We're done. That's our review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. If and when you do see it this weekend, do share your own thoughts in the comments section below. And as always, please don't forget to like and share this review. And we're going to have more video reviews real soon.